listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and have your work build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. Hello and welcome to the Author Inside You podcast. I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. Today joining us is Terry Fitzgibbons, the author of Assume the Watch, Mord as Before. It's about Terry's time in the Navy and specifically his time on the USS Pelican. Welcome, Terry. Good to be here. Good to be with you. Terry, we see that you spent four years in the Navy. Can you give us any background information? Sure. So growing up, um, for one reason or another, as a as a kid, wanted to serve my country and, and um, also wanted to go to college. So enlisting was never really in the picture. And actually growing up uh, in high school, I, all I wanted to do was go to the Naval Academy for, for one reason or another. And part of it was, you know, a genuine desire to serve. But then part of it also was, you know, whatever attracts a young boy to uh, military service, you know, the the you know, some of the pomp and the uniforms and, and, and that, the honor of it all. And, and um, so that kind of got me going. And then I did some deep, you know, reflection on it in high school and decided instead of um, going to the Naval Academy, I took an ROTC scholarship, uh, Navy ROTC scholarship to Notre Dame, which is, um, you know, so the Navy paid for four years of undergrad. And then we had, you know, a little training throughout four years. And then, uh, when I graduated, I was commissioned an officer, a surface warfare officer, uh, as, a, as an ensign, uh, in that would have been May 2004. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for serving the country. We all appreciate that. So tell me about the, the book, the title of the book, Assume okay. the Watch, Mord is Before. What, the, what does it mean? So when someone comes up, when, when you come up to take watch uh, on the bridge of a ship, whether that be under whether the ship is underway or whether tied to the pier, you have to go into the ship's deck log and you say, you know, you kind of sign in. And so I signed in, uh, you know, I assume the watch and uh, you either say moored as before or underway as before, uh, if you were out to see probably some other things that I'm forgetting. Um, but where that came from was, uh, so the first ship that I was on Initially, I was supposed to be in Bahrain for two and a half years, and then after a couple of weeks of being in Bahrain, the Navy sent us uh, our crew back to Ingleside, Texas for a crew swap, and we were supposed to be in, in Texas for some time, and then they would train us up down there and get us ready and send our crew back to Bahrain. Well, it ended up we took over the USS Pelican, which um, unfortunately was this not well well man, maintained uh, broken down little ship that the rest of the navy they hardly knew about and so the joke was that we were always tied to the pier and um, so anytime i would be up come up on watch um, it's like oh we're we're still tied to the pier here so <laughs> uh, assume assumed the watch right period uh, moored as before hey we're we're still moored we're still not going and so that was day uh, after day, that's what... Day after day after day, which sort of hints at some of the content of, of the book was life uh, tied to the pier. <laughs> um, and then the, the subtitle, An Alternative Naval Officer's Guide, is a, a play on... Um, the Naval Officer's Guide is, is some handbook that they give us when we're graduating that uh, all naval officers are supposed to have. And um, so this was my alternative guide, um, just to play on that. I get it. So, so did you write the book? So, for other Navy people, or did you write the book for? Well, I guess who did you write the book for? So that's a good question. So initially, I started keeping. Uh, I, I guess blog is the the right word. But my brother was, who's not in the Navy, he had started a a blog of very very amateur writers, of which uh, I would have been one and still am, and uh, various things. And I started this little column on his blog called the Quarter Deck which ended up just being me telling stories which were somewhat um, somewhat bizarre of, of life uh, life tied to the pier. I guess what made it bizarre was the captain and the, the higher-ups, you know, kind of drive, 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 
uh, cutthroat anxiety, like we were at the tip of the spear, like we were on the front lines. And uh, but there we were, still just yeah. this broken, broken down <laughs> little zip tied to the pier. So in Texas. Yeah. In Texas, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so that kind of fed to my disillusionment, uh, to, to, to say the least, and uh, especially, you know, you know, what does a high school kid know about the military? Um, you know, but you sign up with, with, with goodwill and, and uh, in good faith. And um, so as I was working through my disillusionment with the Navy and, and kind of the bureaucratic day-to-day silliness, I as a, just as an outlet started writing for my brother's uh, blog, I guess you could say, and that became part of the quarter deck. And that was initially for family and friends outside of the Navy. Um, and I kept that up for two years, uh, just here and there, little pieces. And then when I got to my second ship, which was after two and a half years in, after three year, almost three years in, uh, was my second ship was the USS Kalpins in out of Yokosuka, Japan, and that was a ship that was the opposite that we were almost always out to sea, which is a, a different struggle. <laughs> and I started telling, you know, making friends on the ship and, and telling stories of that I had saved because they were online, you know, at, at my brother's website uh, from my first ship and. Um, you know, the stories got some mileage out of them. And then uh, little did I know I had, I had more stories from the second ship, although, you know, from being out to sea. And then so it kind of became, I guess you could say I was keeping sort of an, by the time I was at my second ship, a, an underground blog, so to speak, for junior officers in the Navy. It was mostly shared with, uh, you know, kind of fellow young junior officers, whether they ensigns or lieutenant JGs or uh, lieutenants. Um you know, not too much risk in it, but probably a good thing that our captains and our XOs never really found out about it. So initially, <laughs> all this writing was out there. Um, and so it eventually became for for other people in the Navy. And and then when I got out of the Navy in June 2008, uh, June 30th, 2008, I'll never forget. And um, I, I it kind of all, all these stories were out there. And I just said, hey, maybe we can kind of weave this together into some larger project. So that was that was the basic idea. Well, it sounds like from the beginning, so you had your little seed in your mind, and then mm-hmm. it kept growing. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like something that I think everyone would be interested in because people are interested in the military. What is it like, mm-hmm. especially in the Navy? What's it like to be on a ship? So mm-hmm. I can see how um, people would be very interested in that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yeah, I, so yeah, it started, well, I, I would keep this little, we always had to keep these little notepads on us to walk around and, and write down what was wrong with our piping system or whatever and put into our maintenance log. But um, in the back of that little booklet, I started writing down just kind of the stories that uh, the day-to-day, um, you know, what I would have assumed at the time, I probably would have judged as nonsense um, now looking back, you know, I don't. Not everything was was as nonsensical as I thought it was at the time when I was in it. But um, those stories just started coming together, and yeah, and um, it, it mostly resonates. You know, I think most people who have read it or read the the stories are Navy or military, but um, you know, here and there get get uh, some feedback from people who are kind of in the workaday world. The the, the nine to five or mm-hmm. you know, even later saying, hey, you know, there's a lot of resonance there, too. So, um, you know, I, I, I guess the initial idea for the book, the, the book, not necessarily the initial blog, but the, the book was for fellow people out in the Navy uh, who were still in just kind of as a, hey, you're going to make it. Um, but here and there, it's gotten gained a little wider appeal um, in pockets. So after you you had all the the stories from the from mm-hmm. the blog and you put them all together, did you have a did you hire an editor? I didn't. I didn't. Um, so one, I was in grad school, uh, so I was just kind of doing it on the side, and so I was my own editor. And you know, and I would have a couple. I had a couple friends from the Navy uh, who I had look over stuff. I had a friend, very good friend of mine, who was in the Navy and actually hated the Navy so much he joined the army. Ah. <laughs> he said, and, and he went to, and he knew joining the army would send him to Iraq. And um, oh. but he said, oh, at least I'm not on a ship. <laughs> um, but uh, he helped me kind of edit and go through some stories, especially um, I think when I first wrote it, 
I was I was a little preachy in my my writing, but then uh, this is my buddy Weston. He suggested like, hey, just just stick to the stories. You're you're more effective at just telling stories. It's you're more effective in what you don't say. Let let the stories um, speak for themselves. So. Um, so yeah, I followed his advice, you know, and I had, you know, my mom, dad read it and, um, others, but no professional editor. So, wow. um, just kind of on my own and, um, well, that's, yeah, pretty, that's pretty cool. So, so how did it get to a publisher? So I was, uh, as I was wrapping up, I did a one year program in grad school and I was on my way to, uh, Uganda, actually. Um, I had signed up for a, a year and a half program to uh, for volunteer teaching in Uganda, and I wanted to get something out there before I went to Uganda for a number of reasons. One, I was like, well, this this project will never come together if I don't do it now. And two, as a couple friends in the Navy uh, encouraged me that, hey, you know, you need to write if you're going to write this, write this now because there's some, you know, there's some you still have genuine feeling. We're, we're worried if you come back from from Uganda, you're going to be all PC and lovey and kumbaya, and you're going to water down water down the stories too much. So, get it out there with uh, you know with the raw emotion or um, and uh, as it is. So I so I moved on it, and I was you know I, I think I had a friend of a friend of who um, was working at Penguin, and you know um, I had a friend who from high school who was not in great touch with who was a writer himself was a serious writer excuse me is um was out at the <clears throat> was in grad school out at the uh, Iowa University's writers workshop so um kind of intense writing and he's a skilled writer uh, much more uh, than I am and um you know he had an act you know he had publishers and stuff like that and I was kind of asking around but no movement so I, then I just started you know, Googling and seeing what was out there and came across the idea of self-publishing. And, you know, at first I was hesitant because it's like, you know, if, if you're, if you put something on paper, you of course cherish it and you think it's wonderful, even if it's not wonderful. And, um, you're like, well, why wouldn't, you know, such and such right. publish want not, you know, why wouldn't they want right. this? Of course, right. you know, um, you know, of course uh, you get, there's some swallowing of your pride that you have to do, but what also, um, what I also liked about the self-publishing option was uh, if it ever got big enough, you know, which it hasn't, um, but, you know, that some larger publishing company could pick it up. Uh, you don't you don't limit yourself, or at least not with the company I went with. Right. Uh, so that was that was the reason. So just just I needed to to get it out there um, for kind of for my own catharsis to send it out there to um, people, folks still out in the Navy and, you know, um, you know, there was always the hope that it would be something bigger, but you know, I'm I'm happy with with with, with how it's gone. Good. So, what about so would one of your roadblocks be um, trying to get the word out that you had this book, and what, how are you overcoming that? Um. So, <clears throat> yeah, I guess initially it was the the word out there. You know, I was limited to my. So the the company I went with does some marketing. Uh, I, I I picked an option, a self publishing option, where they do marketing for you. And so they hit up newspapers and they hit up local newspapers and kind of publishers weekly and ads like that. So okay, who was not, who was the publishing company? Uh, Ex Libris. I don't know if you've heard of it. X L I X L I B R I S okay. and. Um, and I was happy with them, and and they helped me put it together. And um, you know, I didn't pay for the for the the top advertising. I was um, as most people beginning. Uh, this is right, yeah, yeah. Most people who are listening, first authors, probably would not be. Yeah, I just you know, kind of went with middle of the range, um, something that I was in grad school, so I didn't have much money, and uh, I was like, let me let me just get this out there. Great. And um, so, and, and I was happy. So I. I, I went with an option. I was like, you know what? If in some time I can break even, uh, then that's fine. Because you know, because with self-publishing, you front the money. Uh, at least with I, at least with the company I went with, I can't speak for 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 others. Yeah, we've and, heard other people say that also. And um, 
I over over after a couple of years, I broke even, and every every so often, that I guess that was what seven years ago. Every so often, a little check still comes in for royalties. Uh, not much, but um, <laughs> oh, that's great! Yeah, that's that great. Nice yeah. Surprise. I always wonder, like, who's still buying it? Um, but um, I think most of its appeal was was in the Navy. And actually, you know what did help too was uh, Ex Libris offered to do a free free transfer to digital and when oh. that was, when that was available the sales um you know at least relatively for me went up so i was i was grateful for that that's interesting so mm-hmm. a, kid, a kindle version mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. yeah so i saw lots of positive reviews on amazon okay. there's plenty of fans of the book out there yeah yeah that's a and ho- hopefully they're not all my dad yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he changed his name a lot then yeah yeah so, uh, so what did you do for marketing? What or what did uh, Ex Libra do for marketing yeah, for you? Yeah, so they did, they did. So they gave complimentary copies, you know, with the book for me to hand out, and then I think they sent to different media outlets, um, more smaller time media outlets, I believe. You know, nothing, nothing huge or national. Um, but I, 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 from what I recall, they wanted to know where I was in my hometown, and they were going to—they were targeting the newspapers there, um, you know, running small ads. And and um, I'm not a marketing—I uh, don't know much about marketing, so um, that, that's what I kind of assumed they did. And and then, um, you know, would give me posters and and bookmarks and. Um, little cards and, you know, send them to bookstores and, and everything and different libraries and, um, you know, not too many bites. You didn't get too many bites out there. Um, but still, you know, I was happy with, with the service and, and you did it. You did yeah, it. That's the best thing. Me. You did it. Was it. Fun trying it. And I think, I think if, if I never did it, I would have been sitting there, you know, still a dreamer, you know, probably right. seven months later, never right. like, Oh, wait till, someone picks up this script or whatever let me let me move to um let me move to new york city and and uh starve and um yeah. and <laughs> live in the village until someone picks this up well no you just gotta you just gotta do it and uh, see what happens from there i think that's a good lesson for our listeners that you actually need to sit down and start writing put your fingers right. on the keyboard and get it done before mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. were telling us a story about how if you'd gone away for a year, it wouldn't be the same book so that you had to do it. So I think that's just really a really good lesson, a good nugget mm-hmm. to bring out of this interview. And, and so much of it was, the, the heart of it was already done. Like those stories were already there. It was just kind of weaving them together and putting into a larger, larger project. So I didn't feel like I was hastily doing it. Um, but I did want to, yeah, did want to get it out there and... Um, yeah, I don't have any regrets, and I'm I'm happy with Ex Libris and the services they provide. Every so often, I will still get phone calls from them, and you know, which I'm grateful for. But I haven't really followed up with them because, um, you know, part of me wonders. You know, seven years later, after one, you know, I don't know if I'm, it's time for a new marketing push, so to speak. I mm-hmm. I, I, I said maybe uh, pun intended uh, that ship has sailed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, well, maybe but, they're, you know, they're hoping for book number two, maybe. Yeah, well, who knows? And maybe I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I've always got ideas floating around, so. Well, great. Uh, Did you get any uh, feedback from the Navy? Were they, actually, were they upset? Very, uh, so, very good question. Um, actually, I have this great story where I, in a, in a fit, you know, like, hey, wanted to get this book out there and still, still kind of feeling a little bit angsty. I, I joke that... Uh, in high school, I didn't really have teenage angst. Uh, I was kind of a goody two shoe, and I saved all my teenage angst for when I was in the Navy. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, and it, it, it yeah, came, it comes out eventually. And um, so I wanted to get you know I I'd written this book, and I kind of wanted to tell the Navy that hey, this is out there. And I actually emailed I, I I emailed well even before I emailed I sent a bunch of copies I had uh, extra copies I sent them to high ranking officers uh, including in the Pentagon people I didn't know um, I never got word back on whether they were received uh. <laughs> uh, I figured hey what the heck right um actually and I wonder if I don't know whether this ever happened but there was a um, a friend of a friend uh, in the Navy and his father at one point, not when I was in, but his father at, at one point uh, was the CNO, the Chief of Naval Operations, which is the highest ranking uh, 
officer in the Navy. He's one of the one of the wow. joint chiefs, one of the joint chiefs of staffs. Um, I know that the son read it. Um, my hope is uh, my I, I have this image where he's he gives the book to his father. I don't know whether I am whatever. sure he would have given <laughs> that to his father. Um, yeah. But um, so I'm mostly positive because I, you know I sent it to people out there and struggling with the same kind of questions and if nothing else just you know you're spending weeks out at sea it's just kind of some good gallows humor for, uh, good for the soul to, and I got a lot of feedback hey you know we're, we're on this deployment but um, I'm seeing I'm you know we're not alone we, you went through the same stuff uh, two years ago thanks for writing this book you know a lot of stuff like that um, my favorite piece of feedback though was I had sent an email to a whole list of uh, captains and XOs on different ships, and it, it was—it's pretty easy to send them an email because it's you know co at such and such ship dot navy dot mil or whatever. Um, and I sent maybe to forty different ships as uh, captains and XOs, and just said, "Hey, here, send read this book, you know, and you know who the heck am I?" But um, so you, but read. So book. you sent them like the Kindle version? Uh, no, sorry, I sent them a link, you know. Oh, okay. uh, so it was kind of, "Hey, read this book," but hey, first buy it. Yeah. <laughs> But um, and no, nothing came back. And then a couple weeks later, I get this email from uh, this captain of a ship. So he's an 06. He's a he's a full full bird captain. And he said, you know, dear Lieutenant Fitzgibbons, um, I read your book. I found it irreverent, um, disrespectful, and some other negative adjective. And then and he said. But at the same time, I found it uh, brilliant and hilarious. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, and then he said, um, thanks for writing. I would love to recommend this book, or I would love to make it mandatory reading for my entire wardroom of officers. That, uh, but then if I did that, I would just be living up to the stereotypes that you made of people like me in the Navy. Oh. Uh, but it was, it was a good-hearted email because um, you could tell he enjoyed it, and he had a good enough humor. He, the guy had dedicated his life to the Navy. I had written a book, uh, kind of ridicule in the Navy, and um, and uh, was, he enjoyed it. So I, 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 I really I, I cherish that piece of feedback. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful that somebody, you know, well, first he took the time to tell you also. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. was nice. Very grateful, yeah. Yeah. and um, and I am I am glad I wrote it at the time. You know, I think if I were to write the um, write it now, it would be a lot less uh, angsty because you know we're getting older and the wisdom of years that uh, I, I see that a lot of a lot of the folly of the Navy. You know, some of it's just institutional life, but then also I wasn't the I wasn't the best officer, and and um, I probably na nowadays when I look back, I have more sympathy for those who were in charge of me and those who were in charge of the institution um you know that captain for example um so no regrets in writing it uh and writing it then and how i did no regrets whatsoever i needed to um but with the wisdom of some years not many years later but some um you know i, I have uh, i have no ill will no ill will and um, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have served so what is the best way to purchase your book for our listeners? Sure, sure. So probably the easiest way is uh, it is available through Amazon and through barnesandnoble.com and uh, whether that's hard copy or electronic for Kindle or Nook, I guess, is, is Barnes & Noble. Uh, and then, you know, other smaller booksellers on the Internet have them as well. Um, and yeah, that would probably be the best way. You can order directly from Ex Libris, uh, exlibris.com. And, but I think most people have done it through Amazon or Barnes and Noble or, uh, another online option. Okay. I want, I guess one mistake I did make with, with, which kind of goes back to uh, the question you asked before we even started recording is for some reason I went with, um, I, maybe I felt like I was filling out like a driver's license form, but when I put my name on the book, uh, I put my full legal name, Terrence Fitzgibbons. <laughs> and so um, everyone calls me Terry, and yet um, yet on the book is Terrence Fitzgibbons. Okay. And um, so, you know, I mean, I don't think that really hurt me at all, but it's like, you know, consistency is probably a good thing. Well, that's um, something right. good for the listeners to hear yeah. also. That's not right. a thing you don't think about. You're, right. You know, yeah. Yeah, and people, when, when I first was, when the book came out with that on it, people were like, is this a 
phase in your life where you're starting to go oh. by your own <laughs> and I didn't think much of it. Like I said, I, you know, I was like, oh, this is my, like if I was filling out some, some application for something, I would put my, my full name. But, um, yeah, that would be one, one thing I, I probably would just keep consistent, especially, um, yeah, almost everyone calls me Terry, so might as well stick with Terry. But right. I don't think it really hurt me at all. But um, right. just a, just a random tangential thought there. Thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you, Terry, <laughs> <laughs> for being a guest on the Author Inside You <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so I have just two more questions. Sure. What's the best advice you can give fellow authors who are listening, and how's the best way they can get in touch with you? Sure, sure. So I'll answer the 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 last one um, first because that's easier. So probably email, um, and I'm, I'm not on social media. And uh, email would be T J Fitzgibbons. That's T J F I T Z G I B B O N S at gmail dot com. So email is uh, probably the best. And then um, yeah, advice I would say is just do it. Like I said. Um, and you know you don't want to do it hastily, especially, especially those of uh, those folks out there who are doing fiction. You know, I, I haven't really. Someday maybe I'll experiment writing fiction. I'm a little nervous about that, uh, and I know that takes a whole other skill set and a whole other. Um, you know, I know you, you you draw from a deeper well there to, to to write fiction, and you know you don't want to force that. So I'm not. I don't want to encourage anyone to be hasty. But uh, if you got something, just go ahead and do it, and. Um, self-publishing right if it if it if you get enough press about it it can always be picked up by someone else and um yeah that they just gotta gotta get your words out there i guess great and one more thing we should mm -hmm. what about your brother's website do you want to put a plug in hey it no longer exists but oh, it was okay it was, uh, it was pennsylvaniaville.com um but then um he was in grad school too and it was costing him money so he oh, yeah <laughs> He uh, he pulled it down, but um, it was yeah it was the quarter deck on, on Pennsylvania. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, that's fun, very fun. Yeah. Well, we'll have your contact information and links right. to your book uh, on our show notes. And right. right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Author Inside You podcast. And until next time, right on. Great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty.